So, we often talk about how plastics horrific impact on environmental issues and how they will impact our natural environments and other species. But we never really talk about how the origin, the birthplace of those plastic bottles that we use, and they hurt people too, economically, in many ways, health, finances, and even general opportunities for those individuals impacted. So in 2010, when the Deepwater Horizon oil rig happened, most of us were concerned about how it would affect the environment in the Gulf, but no one really questions the purpose and why people even build an oil rig there. Because, I mean, if we never build a oil rig, then the oil spill would never happen, right? Well, today, there are over 4,000 oil platforms in the Gulf of Mexico. I mean, look, okay, we just had a, um, a oil spill, and we just built more, like, oil platforms. Why? What's the reason? And to answer these questions, let's begin our journey from the mouth of Mississippi River. Well, um, let's go back. Oh look, um, nothing special, right? It's just bold, beautiful place. Well, let's move more inland along the Mississippi, along the Mississippi River. And welcome to Cancer Alley, where toxic air is about to get worse. So this area covers an 85 mile or 137 kilometer stretch of land along the Mississippi River, as you see, as you see, from New Orleans to Bitter Ridge. And this place containing, contains over 150 petrochemical plants and refineries, right? But how does that connect to the, those oil rigs down the Gulf, right? Um, and yeah, those factories, they basically attain chemical products like plastic and rubbers by refining them from petroleum, basically using crude oils provided by those oil rigs down the Gulf of Mexico. And in the process of, make, of refining, they produce toxic chemical gases like effluent um, and propylene into the area. And those gases result in the highest rate of air pollution caused cancer in the United States, nearly 50% higher than national average. And this place is also considered home to over 45,000 residents. And speaking of us, people might think, hey, we are in Deerfield, Massachusetts. Why should I even care about a random place from Louisiana? Well, let's talk about something closer to us. Let's talk about something closer to home. Springfield, Massachusetts. So, yeah, this city, it looks, looks good, right? Not, nothing special as well. But, but do you know this city ranks 12th for the most challenging place in the U.S. to live with asthma? But and four years ago, in 2019, the city ranked number one for its high asthma prevalence and high number of asthma-related emergencies in the, United, in the United States. So Springfield was the seventh highest polluted count of the 100 ranked cities, as well as the, you know, the highest rent rate of asthma prevalence overall. And those counts are also a big factor of Springfield's residents with asthma. And there were air pollutions, income, you know, traffic, and the, mo the, the main reason why I know the asthma is they're because of those car, those air, uh, those polluted air produced by gases and also those um, biomass factories. And again, those people are people who are impacted by, you know, their low income populations. And they don't have choice. You know, they can't just move away. They don't have economic choices like us. They don't have the luxury for for people, for us to choose, like us, we, for example, mm, on the market, we buy products all the time, waters, yogurt all the time, right? But then they are high-priced yogurt and they're also low-priced yogurt. And people like them, they, those populations, they can't afford those like expensive, I mean, to us it could be cheap, but to them they're expensive and they, can, and they can't afford it. And those products are oftenly found to be Product, products that are, you know, toxic, you know, contain, produced with, you know, toxic gases that is not good for your body. And, for example, when we, you know, buy something, we, we are, in, and we are also increasing the demand for products. And that's to be something, you know, that also direct to, you know, these com communities, and that's not good. Yeah. 
So the next time when you see plastic, plastic and those bottles, throw it, it's the blue one. <laughs> you throw it in the blue one, not like that, like this. <laughs> throw it like that and save those two. And, and again, whenever you guys buy plastic bottles, think of those people who live in Cancer Alley. Think of them and also the consequences you cost after you purchase those bottles.